And first comment I'm reading. Greg and Derek gotta make a video after this. They gonna bash this punk. And so let's see, gonna bash this guy. What is he gonna say about testosterone being a joke? Coach Greg and Michael Hearns at it again. Says, testosterone is a joke. Literally, as per the title. And as we know, Michael Hearn, who's a lifetime natural, has testosterone levels, you know, on the low normal side, in the 400s, but yet has built all this muscle. And so he says, testosterone is a joke. And so let's watch this video and let's learn from Mike O'Hearn. Make sure your T levels are through the roof. That will do absolutely nothing for your health and fitness world. Why is that? And so Mike O'Hearn says, having your testosterone levels through the roof will do absolutely nothing for your health and fitness. Nothing. And notice he's doing cardio this entire time. From a guy who says you don't need to do cardio, it's not that important. Isn't it strange that he's doing this entire video doing cardio? And not only that, his previous video, which was posted in the same 24 hour period, 50 straight minutes where he did cardio. And so what's the bigger lie? That Mike O'Hearn is a lifetime natural or that he doesn't believe in doing a lot of cardio? From what I'm seeing, he does more cardio than Coach Greg. How many times you see me doing videos the entire time doing cardio? And speaking of cardio, I have my bike race in 40 minutes, and so it's time to take my Geo2 Max as well as my Turk Builder, now known as Ectibuild, to go along with that one and a quarter scoops of hardcore stim pre-workout. That's the one I used before. Racing on the bike gets me amped up so that I can race faster than last time. And we all know that pre-workouts, especially those with stims, can help you go harder than the last time in the gym. But we don't all know is how Geo2 Max works. What this does, the main ingredient, NMN, it's been shown in research to boost your ability to perform cardio at a higher pace. Once you start breathing hard, that's when it kicks in. That's when you can really feel it. And so if you're able to go harder in the gym, to do cardio longer at a higher pace, you're going to burn more calories and you're going to make more improvements, ultimately becoming a better butter burner. Get blood work, 100% do get blood work. Check to see what's going on with your body. And so despite the fact that he doesn't think testosterone levels are important, he does suggest that you get your blood work. And not just to see what your testosterone level's at, but to check out all your biomarkers to ensure that you are in fact healthy. And so I 100% agree with Mike. If their blood work come back and it's low or there's certain problems, then by all means, do something to fix that. And so to say testosterone is a joke, that it can't be beneficial, that it's not important, I think that's going a little bit too far. Because the answer's right in front of you guys. You guys are all of it. T levels have to be through the roof and then I can be big and strong. No, you can't. And so what Michael Hearn is saying is that even if your testosterone levels are through the roof, it's not gonna help you to get stronger. Well, frankly, it is going to help you, but it doesn't guarantee it. And so what he's saying is just because you use testosterone and or steroids does not automatically mean that you're going to be able to build an amazing physique. And that I 100% agree with Mike. Many people just think if they take PDs, they will get their dream physique. But the truth is you do also need to have the genetics. I've seen millions of guys come through Gold's Gym Venice, all of them with huge T levels. And why didn't they last? You thought everybody that comes through Gold's Gym Venice that gets on some T lasts forever? No, I'm pretty sure, Mike, we didn't all think that every single person that took steroids who went to Gold's Gym all lasted and trained their entire life. People, they come and go. We all do, in fact, realize this. Sure, they put on muscle for a moment, then they get injured, and then they're done. And then they wreck their body because they got on T, and they're really done, and they don't come back even from the injury. But Mike's point is, in fact, valid. He says, many people, they go on testosterone, they get injured, and then they quit. Many of which, they try to come back, they get injured again, and they quit. And so they're using testosterone at an early age, perhaps in their teens, early 20s. And for what? At that moment in time, they're thinking, yeah, I want to be a bodybuilder. And Mike acknowledges, if you want to be the best of the best, the elite bodybuilders, you can't do it naturally. You have to take something probably going to be steroids. But at that time, you're not looking ahead. You're not thinking about your entire life that you have ahead of you. You're thinking about, I want to have an amazing physique right now. The only thing is, how many people keep doing it for the rest of their life? Just look around. Look at how many people join the gym, perhaps your friends, family members, and so on, and how many of those people stuck to it for decades. Sure, they go harder than last time for a couple of years, maybe even five, maybe 10, but are they still doing it now? I've been training since I was 10 years old. Michael Hearn also started as a teenager. He's over 50 years old, and he's still going to the gym now as passionate as he's ever been. But will you? 
And so if you're 20 years old and you take steroids thinking, well, I need that to get that physique. I need to take this. Do you really? What about the damage it's going to do your body? What about the fact that it is going to increase your risk of injuries? Your muscles, they grow exponentially faster with steroids. Yes, we're not going to bullshit you. We're not going to say you can't build more muscle with steroids. Well, perhaps Mike will. He's saying testosterone's a joke. Testosterone is no joke. It's the real deal. It will, in fact, dramatically speed up your rate of muscle hypertrophy. But your tendons, ligaments don't grow at that same rate. And so many people, they take steroids, especially those who are ego lifting. And what happens? They get hurt. They put more weight on the bar they can handle. They do silly things in the gym and they're injured. Remember Callum Von Monger doing bicep curls with Chris Bumstead? What happened to his bicep? It tore off. And have you seen Chris Bumstead training with Urs, two of the best bodybuilders in the world, lifting extremely heavy weights for low reps, not concentrating on using perfect form. Ego lifting, trying to one up each other. That is a recipe for disaster, especially when you're dieting. Chris Bumstead himself, he's already battled several serious injuries. And he's only, what, 27, 28 years old? Irv's 24. How long before he also gets hurt? And so if you are, in fact, taking steroids, be careful. And that is the message Mike is trying to make. If you're taking steroids, you're probably going to get injured. If you get injured, you can't train. And then are you going to keep going? Why are they not talking about that? Because some of them are injured. Some of those guys can't even lift against Mona. And although I like Mike's message, the way he delivers it, I'm just not a fan. Overall, most of the videos I do on Mike, I'm attacking what he's saying. And I just don't like the fact that he's a fake natty. But his overall message here is great. But why is he talking about his wife being 50 years of age and natural lifting twice a week and is stronger than everyone who's taken steroids? I don't get it. Like, why bring that up? Just speak your mind. Say, if you take steroids when you're young and you get hurt and you quit, then was it worth it? What's the point? Don't make decisions on what you want right now as these decisions can affect you for the rest of your life. 50 year old woman with a baby, natty, trains twice a week and stronger than those guys that are on T. And so really, how does it benefit us, me, you, everyone, to hear that his 50 year old wife who has a baby only trains twice a week and is stronger, looks better than all of us? Like, how does that help us? What benefit was offered in saying that? I, I don't get it. I mean, what does that tell us? Should we all just train twice a week? Is the secret having a baby? Like, why is he saying this? The first thing is your mental state. Can you do it? Do you want to do this? And do you want to do it for a long period of time? What is this? Life? Healthy life? Exactly. And so this is the part of the message that makes sense to me. He's saying before you decide to take testosterone, steroids, performance enhancing drugs, at least learn the ropes first. Spend your time learning how to train properly, eat properly, and decide for yourself, am I in this for the long haul? Or is just just a flash in the pan? We often will take up a sport, we try it out for a couple of years, and oh, it's not that good. I don't like it. You go golfing a couple of years, ah, oh, it's not really for me. You stop golfing, you try basketball. Do some basketball for a bit and try something else, you switch from sport to sport. Well, if you switch to the sport of bodybuilding and you start taking steroids the first year of training, well, how stupid are you? Think of it. That decision to take steroids, that is something that can impact you for the rest of your life. If you go and golf for a year and you don't like it, you can quit. It's not like you're injecting something in your body that's going to change your hormones. So at least train long enough to decide for yourself, is this something I want to do? Is this a risk I want to take that can impact me for the rest of my life? Consider I did 42 bodybuilding shows, 100% natural. Trained for over 20 years without taking steroids. And so anyone that judges me would say, oh, you use PDs. Yeah, but I did the best I could without it first. I trained for over 20 years. I hit my natural genetic limit. And as an adult, a full grown adult, I then made that decision. But if you're in your late teens, early 20s, you're not ready to make that decision yet. You haven't perfected your diet, your training, and you don't know if you're even gonna like it 10 years from now. The injuries are gonna finish you. And no matter how much tea that you're on, or think you should be on, that's not gonna put you over the hump. An injury is an injury. And so just because you're on a lot of testosterone doesn't mean you're not gonna get injured. And you know what happens all the time? People call me up and do consults. They say, hey, I'm injured. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take testosterone to speed the injury. No, you're not. It's gonna mask the injury. Yeah, you have bad shoulders, take a bunch of DECA, and don't feel that pain, and keep training. And how's that gonna work out for you? You're gonna hurt yourself even worse. This is what I want you youngsters to do. Take a couple years, you're young, so everything should be good, but check your blood, make sure, and then just diet hard for a couple of years. Give yourself a chance. And so Mike's saying, push off using PDs for as long as humanly possible. It'll always be there. You wanna do it right now, so what? Why not wait? 
I could apply the same advice to getting married. Oh, you've been dating for six months. Now we need to get married. We're in love. Will you be in 10 years? Why do you need to get married now? The divorce rate's over 50%. Oh, we're in love. Yet y'all stand at the altar, say, I do for the rest of my life. Over 50% of you, you're going to get divorced. And so why not just wait? And so to me, the decision to take steroids, that is a bigger decision than getting married. Well, you can always get divorced. Can you undo taking steroids? Can you rewind the clock, go back in time, and have never done it? Last I checked, time travel still impossible. Let's see. If time travel does become possible, well, they'll go back in time to me right now and tell me. Nope, sorry, not going to happen. And so you can't undo the decision to take steroids. So my advice, wait. Wait as long as possible. And if you ever do decide it, please go and get the advice from your doctor. Also, you probably can create a physique better than a lot of these guys that are on the stuff that are out there griping about it. And it's true. If you have really great genetics and you train natural for years, you can in fact build a much better physique than the majority of people who take steroids. I don't mean to brag, but when I was a natural bodybuilder, I did in fact win overall bodybuilding competitions against people who are taking steroids. And so if you do have great genetics and you put in the years of hard work, the proper training, the dieting, you can in fact build an amazing physique. And I'm not saying as good as the best bodybuilders on steroids, but clearly a gifted natty bodybuilder is going to beat an enhanced bodybuilder with poor genetics. And interesting comments about cardio. It's awesome to see you doing cardio too. Cardio is very beneficial. Absolutely. A response to that. Didn't he say never do cardio because it will make you dependent on it? And that's 100% true. Mike has literally said, if you do cardio all the time, you're going to depend on it. And so what happens if you don't do cardio after every single meal? And I'm like thinking, so what? Just do the cardio. And yet he's doing cardio the entire video here. The video he posted before this, 50 straight minutes he's doing cardio. And so with Mike, it's what to believe. I don't know what to believe. First he says never do cardio, yet he's doing cardio all the time. Says he's a lifetime natural, which I personally don't believe. And so which is it? Why didn't he just say, hey guys, I'm on HRT and I really do a lot of cardio. It helps me stay lean. Imagine the message that would create. Because jumping down the other side, when you still don't know how to eat right, how does that make sense? That confuses me. It's like, hey, I'm going to jump on some tea. Cool. What are you eating? I don't know. Well, it doesn't make sense. Got to agree. Go on the internet today and read about foods that help boost your testosterone naturally. Read about sleep and how it boosts your testosterone naturally. Or you can, of course, watch my videos on how to boost your testosterone naturally. But in brief, try not to have too low a body fat percentage or too high, somewhere in the middle, perhaps 15% with a range of 10 to 20 being ideal for most people. Also, try not to have too much stress, get enough sleep, have a healthy diet, all four food groups, getting enough macro and micronutrients, and make sure you get plenty of exercise, but don't overtrain. If you do too much of a good thing, it's actually going to be bad. Man, I'm glad I had this talk with you guys today. I'm just sitting there sitting, sitting on my cardio. I'm not actually doing cardio. It's a green screen. And he's being sarcastic. He is actually doing cardio. It's not a green scheme. But for some reason, fitness influencers, they want to make it look like they don't do cardio. It's almost bragging rights. Hey, I got this shredded physique without doing any cardio at all. Oh, I don't need to do any cardio to look this way. Why are you bragging about that? How is that a good thing? To say, I don't do cardio and I look like this? How is that a flex? How is that a brag? I don't get it. Doing cardio is amazing. The fact that you're saying you don't do cardio or that you don't like it, to me, that upsets me. That makes me sad to think that people don't actually enjoy doing something that I like so much. When you're passionate about something and you really like something, don't you love hearing other people who share your passion? If you love motorcycles, you really love riding it. Don't you like hearing about other people who do the same thing? You have a nice car, you love it. Don't you like it when others do the same? I like racing bicycles, love hearing about other people who also race bikes. And so if you're an animal lover, you like playing a certain instrument, you want others to also love animals, to play instruments. And so for me, doing cardio, this is how I feel. And so when I hear other people saying cardio is bad, you shouldn't do cardio, it's going to kill you younger, I hate it. And I'm sure you can understand, if you love pets and you have people saying, I hate animals, well, that's not fun to hear. When, so when I hear people saying, well, you don't need to do cardio, you shouldn't do cardio, I hate doing cardio, don't need it to look good. I'm like, 
Why are you saying that? 15 minutes to the bike race. I'm ready to go already. It's only been 25 minutes and I can feel it. Only one and a quarter scoop of hardcore stim pre-workout. That is all I need. One to two scoops a day. I can't imagine taking two scoops. Maybe if you're a high stim junkie, you might need two. But for me, one and a quarter scoops, that is all I need. And so you want to check out this video or his other video called Ask the Titan Q&A, where it's 50 minutes nonstop answering questions about testosterone while doing cardio the entire time. Well, please have a look. And so as you can see, Michael Hearn clearly does a lot of cardio, not just a little bit, but a lot. He stays in amazing shape. He says he's a lifetime natural, which is debatable. But one thing he does do is he enjoys being fit. He enjoys lifting weights and doing cardio. And if you don't plan on lifting weights for the rest of your life, why are you taking steroids as a teenager guy, girl in your early 20s? doesn't make sense. Think about your future. Any decision you make, don't take it lightly. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Remember, use code GREG to get 10% off hdltsups.com or please click the link in the description. All kinds of supplements, not just the ones mentioned. G test, three tests, pre-workouts, protein powders, so much going on. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, watch the tube loops, and until next time, I am out.